Well, the striking scorpions have finally had a refresh. So today I'm gonna to paint an old one. Welcome back to Anvil Doom Miniatures, the channel where I paint those old deformed metal minis that you've forgotten about because you've moved on to that nice, easy to use plastic. Now recently, as you probably know, I've turned into a bit of an Eldar sim. I love the old model's aesthetic, shape, and the lore. So when I saw GW was releasing some new striking scorpions for Kill Team, I thought it was time to glam this old boy up. Now the new models do look really cool, but I am still a fan of the old ones. I think they look silly, they're funny, and they're actually surprisingly very small. I always do a bit of research before I start painting something new, and I saw that old mate Dazza Latham painted this amazing looking striking scorpion a few years back. And I wanted to test myself to see if I had the chops to paint something up to this level or just similar to this. Spoiler, I don't have the chops to paint up to this level. Now I'm not going to sugarcoat it, I have a pretty bad relationship with the colour green. I always find it really hard to paint. I feel like when I paint it, it always comes out really dark and drab or just not how I want it to look. So today's episode is about conquering my fear of green. So hopefully we both learn something from this. Anyway, that's enough chat, let's get straight into it. So first up, I'm going to mix one part dark green to one part warpstone glow and apply this all over the armour. I want this green armour to be more vibrant than my usual greens, so I made the trip to town recently for a bit of hobby shopping to grab some new colours and Warpstone Glow was at the top of my list. Now it's time to put some yellow down and just like the green, I think I need a little bit of practice with yellow because I've got some Empire models waiting to batch paint and I'm going to do an Avalanche theme. They're just sitting behind me waiting to get some paint on them, but don't worry, I will be painting them very, very soon. I apply some Vallejo Bronze Flesh Tone as the base to the helmet armor tags, and this weird little slotted part on his back. And I can't stress enough to you all how good bronze flesh tone is as a base for yellow. If you don't have it, make sure you get your hands on it, it makes life a whole lot easier. Next I throw on some Abaddon black to the face of the helmet, and every second little strip on that backpack thing. A bit of Doomball brown goes all over the leather pouches and the straps. Now Darren Latham's paint job on his Striking Scorpion had a really red like leather and I couldn't work out which colour it was so if you have any idea please leave it down in the comments. Time for some true metallic metals and I applied Gehenna's Gold all over the chainsword and the little pistol. Two thin coats of this works a real treat. And last up for the layers, I'm going to use some gunmetal to all the other parts of the weapons. I find gunmetal to be a great base for silver as it's just a little bit darker than regular silver paint. As a mini painter, I find myself studying people's works. I sit there and stare at them and try to figure out how they did certain things with certain techniques and also what colors they used. Now with this Darren Latham Striking Scorpion, I spent a lot of nights sitting there thinking and pondering how he did it. And I tried to decipher how he got the greens looking this crisp. And one thing that kept popping in my mind was how many layers of green I would have to use to get it looking this good. Now I don't own a green wash that I'd be happy to use on this guy, so I made my own using contrast medium and a couple squirts of dark green. I apply this all over, and even though it wasn't as dark as I would have liked it to be, it still gave the recesses enough contrast for the following green layers to stand out. The next wash to go on was Seraphim Sepia, and I just throw that all over the yellows, and I use this straight out of the pot. Now I didn't really care if I got some on the black, because it wouldn't really be seen. I then use Agrax Earthshade and apply that all over the Doomble Brown leather and make sure this goes all around the leathers and into the recesses as well because I want those nice outlines visible. And like usual I apply a nice coat of watered down Gullum and Flesh wash all over the gold areas and a wash of Numb Oil all over the gun metal. Now the washes are finally complete and it's time to move on to the highlights, but before we get into that, if you could like this video and maybe subscribe to the channel, that'd be great. I've got plenty of videos and you might find a new favorite one. Anyway, let's get back into it. So as I said earlier, today I'm going to apply a few more layers to my highlights. I want these color transitions from dark to light to be a little bit more seamless. First up, I carefully go over the raised areas of the armor with some pure warpstone glow. Then I mix three parts warpstone to one part mook green and paint to the larger top sections of the armor, anywhere I think light would be catching. Then I go for a smaller skinnier highlight of half warp stone, half moot green. You can see I've swapped my brush out here for a skinnier brush, and I just do that because I like to have a little bit more control. I don't know why, but I always feel comfortable using skinnier, smaller brushes. I guess it's from using pencils and pens so much to do illustration work. And now I use one part warp stone to three parts moot green and apply that to an even skinnier highlight on the armor. This could be seen as a little bit of overkill, but I was looking at that damn reference image and I wanted to get it as close as I possibly could. 
And from here I use pure moot green to the top facing edges and then I mix in some dawn yellow to the moot green for a really, really tiny top facing edge highlight to finish off. That was a bit of a marathon effort, but I'm really happy with how this green turned out. And who knows, maybe with a bit more practice, I'll start to like the color green a little bit more. Now I'm moving on to the yellow and I'm gonna use a glazing technique for this. I go over the helmet and the decorations on the armor with half bronze flesh tone, half Uriel yellow. Two coats of this works pretty well. I just make sure I don't go over the recesses that were covered in the serra from sepia. Next, I use pure Uriel yellow as a glaze towards the top back of the helmet. If you haven't tried glazing, I highly recommend taking a look at some glazing tutorials. It'll just elevate your model and give it some additional interest when you're looking at it. I also add that Uriel yellow all over the armor's little yellow parts. I then mix up one part Uriel yellow to one part Dawn yellow and get glazing again. I apply this to the back third of the helmet and also glaze a tiny part just above the face. And the reason why I'm doing this is to give this weird shaped helmet some dimension and not just be a flat, plain yellow looking tic tac. And last up, I go for an edge highlight of pure dawn yellow to the trim of the helmet and any other decorations on the armor. And I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out and I think I'll be using it on the next project. Now it's time to highlight the black parts on the mask and the back of the helmet. I go over the Abaddon black with Dark Reaper. Then I go over a smaller area with Thunderhawk blue. And I go for some rust gray as the final highlight for this. Very simple stuff. I've been doing leathers and true metallic metals a very specific way on this channel for quite a while, so I want to mix this up and try something new. I always get to a point of painting where I think to myself, is that it? Is that as far as I can go? But I feel like there's always a way to push yourself a little bit further each time you're painting. So sometimes it's good just to throw everything you know out the window or add some more steps to your technique to push a little bit further. Now, as I want the leathers to have more of a red tone, I go back over with some Doomble Brown, making sure I don't get any in the recesses. I then start mixing in small amounts of scrag brown to the Doomble Brown, just to build up that highlight until I have a pure scrag brown on all the corners and edges of the leather. And now it's time for another new paint I picked up on my journey to the hobby shop, and this one is Zemesi Desert. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I'm sure you'll all let me know in the comments. And I use this for an edge highlight to the top facing areas all over the leather. It's time to make this future elf shine and I apply gunmetal back all over the null oil wash areas and I start mixing in small amounts of silver to build up this highlight. And as this model has lots of skinny little hose bits with bumps and stuff like that, I like to use a really fine brush because I try to avoid getting any of this bright silver in those recesses. Okay, so to get this gold glistening, I go back over the gull and wash parts with some watered down Gehenna's gold. And I try to avoid getting any of this gold around the little knobs of the sword and the pistol because I want to keep that contrast. Now once I'm happy with that, I start mixing in small amounts of polished gold to the Gehenna's gold and glazing these mixes to the top of the chain sword and anywhere I think there's going to be some light catching. And I did about three mixes of this before I got to a pure polished gold glaze. To finish, I mix in a tiny amount of silver to the polished gold and just glaze that to the tip of the chain sword and then applied a pure silver highlight all over. I'm really happy with how this is looking and with a bit more practice, I'll be ready to try some more metallic surfaces on more complicated models. I'm gonna give this guy some bright blue eyes and gems, so I throw down some techless blue as the base to these areas. Next, I use some lotham blue to the bottom left of the gems and the front half of the eyes. Then I use blue horror to a smaller area of the left of the gem and just towards the front of the eye lens. And last up, I apply some watered down black to the top right of the gems, and then a crisp white dot over the top of this. I also apply a little white dot to the back of the islands. So the bulk of this guy is now complete, and it's time to put that little striking scorpion logo in the middle of his helmet. Now I could do this with a transfer, but I made a promise when I first started painting that I wouldn't use transfers unless I absolutely had to, and I was absolutely desperate. And I'm not absolutely desperate today, so I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. So the way I attempt free hands on minis is by making sure I'm all warmed up first. I want to have been painting for about half an hour prior to attempting anything so my hands aren't too loose and they're not too tired. You can always do a little practice doodle on your wet palette just before you attempt it. I'm using Abaddon Black for this logo and I use the tips of my fingers to make a straight line motion. And obviously I take my time. I find taking your time results in not having to clean up as much and luckily today I didn't make any mistakes but if I did I would have just used Uriel Yellow to fix it up. 
And that was pretty much it. I just painted the base goblin green and here it is, one classic green and yellow striking scorpion. Thanks again for watching my dudes and I hope this helps if you're picking up those new striking scorpions or if you want to paint your old ones that are sitting there. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers.